Good day everyone, here is your latest video update on Typhoon Jalawat and Tropical Storm Evinier on this Wednesday afternoon or Wednesday evening if you are watching from Japan. Begin first with Typhoon Jalawat or Bagyong Lawin, last located approximately 480 kilometers east of the city of Papari here in Cagayan, located here in the northern uh, Luzon. Maximum sustain winds are still at 205 km per hour with gusts of up to 285 km per hour. S system is currently moving northwestward at 10 km per hour. Now this winds are, uh, are from the Japan Meteorological Agency. The Joint Typhoon Warning Center has the winds at 135 knots sustained or about um, 250 km per hour. So it has weakened it's still a super typhoon, but uh, it has been downgraded from a category 5 down to a category 4 if you are basing it on GTWC's 1 minute sustained winds. System still looks pretty impressive on the visible image. So that uh, very strong, very symmetrical central dense overcast still has that very well defined and cloud cleared uh, definitely eye here. Um, has contracted a little bit in the past 24 hours and believe it or not system has been undergoing another round of eyewall replacement cycle in the past 24 to 36 hours although the latest uh, microwave data we have although this is somewhat outdated now but, uh, two hours ago actually so microwave image does suggest the eyewall replacement cycle is almost complete you can see the ring of convection trying to form and taking over once more uh, if you've watched our video in the past two to three days where you watched the first hour replacement cycle get complete uh, we were seeing nearly the same crest characteristics as we are seeing now same signs as before which could mean that uh, again the hour replacement cycle may be coming to an end now as for the signal warnings latest here from Pagas as of 5 p.m. so the latest signal warnings that they, ha that they have uh, we now have signal number two as expected up for the provinces of Cagayan and also the groups of islands north of Luzon. We have Kalayan, Babuyan, and Batanes groups of islands. Signal number one uh, remains in effect for uh, Ilocos Norte, Kalinga, Payao, Abra, and uh, Isabela. So basically, nearly all provinces in the uh, northern Luzon are under some sort of signal no warning, especially the uh, islands north of Luzon that could actually get typhoon force winds in the next two days. Now looking at the latest infrared image, you can see still seeing that eye surrounded by strong wave convective activity, but if you compare the video we have from two days ago, we are actually seeing the same appearance in infrared when, uh, when Jalawat finished that first eye world placement cycle. What what does mean with our system doesn't necessarily mean system will re-intensify as we've seen last time remember uh, when it finished that our replacement cycle and actually intensified to a category 5 um, we don't really think system will re-intensify anymore as the wind shear is starting to uh, increase slightly and also system moving slightly cooler waters in this region but after the hour replacement cycle we may see the system uh, show signs of uh, of recovery but I expect this to maintain a super typhoon intensity so at the very least still a very strong powerful category 4 once it hits the islands here and also as it moves just east of Taiwan in the next two to three days but for now much of the convection still remains offshore not affecting parts of the Philippines there are some uh, light rain showers being reported here but not too terribly heavy and the uh, southwest monsoon hasn't uh, really been that strong. We are seeing some isolated thunderstorms, especially here in Subic. If you look at that infrared image there, you can see it, very cold cloud tops. Uh, so seeing some isolated thunderstorms in parts of central Luzon, but again, not too, not too terribly heavy, not too widespread. If you are under the thunderstorm, be wary for strong winds and even threat of tornadoes. But other than that, uh, much of the convection still remains offshore. Uh, but that could change in the next 24 to 48 hours. I expect the system as it moves northeast, northwestward, expect uh, those rains with it to start impacting more parts, especially here in no extreme northern Luzon. That's why they are under some sort of signal warnings as been issued by Pagasa. 
Now, as for the forecast, the uh, subtropical ridge here in eastern China is beginning to exert its its uh, dominance here. It has been steering Jalawa to the northwest in the past 12 hours now, as has been seen on the uh, track. Uh, expect the system to continue moving northwestward, perhaps moving uh, very near the uh, Babuyan groups of islands and uh, perhaps near the eastern part of Taiwan the next uh, 24 hours. But as you can see here to the north, this is a trough that is forecast to dive in to the east, perhaps reaching the eastern China in the next 24 to 36 hours. So by Thursday and Friday, this trough will induce a weakness weakening this subtropical ridge and allowing Jalawa to actually turn northward sparing a uh, landfall and sparing Taiwan from seeing the direct impact from this typhoon so good news for for a Taiwanese viewers evidently as the trough moves in uh, kicking this uh, absorbing the system and by Friday uh, forecast this to quickly move to the northeast accelerating al along the way and also during the time we expect Jalawa to weaken from a category 4 down to a category 3 as it moves east of Taiwan and down to a category 2 uh, as it moves very near Okinawa but still by that time a very strong threat for Okinawa uh, still the possibility of seeing typhoon force winds by Friday and Saturday also taking a look at the latest um, computer model forecast they are also showing better improvement, uh, better agreement now uh, less spread in the uh, in the computer runs, so better consensus, much closer, definitely, in compared to the past two to three days here. Uh, most of the models are now agreeing in the northwestward turn, and again, northward turn, avoiding Taiwan, and a recurve to the northeast, perhaps moving very near the island of Okinawa in the next three days here. Let's take a look now at the latest official forecasts. We begin with Pagasa, and again showing you a northwestward turn. So we can showing nearly the same tracks as with the computer forecast models of avoiding Taiwan and again by the uh, Saturday afternoon forecast to move near the Ryukyu Islands uh, as it moves to the northeast. Here is the Japan Meteorological Agency's forecast uh, again giving it the same idea a forecast to move northwestward and then northward and eventually to the northeast passing near Okinawa. Notice here that JMA is actually forecasting Jalawa to move on the left side of the island, so putting Okinawa on the right front quadrant, so putting perhaps the island under the strongest quadrant in terms of surface winds. And finally, we'll take a look at the Joint Typhoon Warning Center's forecast here. Again, very similar forecasts now, which is very good for us in terms of the consensus. But uh, JTWC is actually forecasting Jalawa to be much f slightly farther away from Taipei, from Taiwan compared to JMA, uh, much closer to the east coast of Taiwan here. Joint Typhoon Warning Center forecasting a uh, sun, uh, closest point of approach to be around 350 kilometers per hour, so sparing the east coast of Taiwan from seeing the strongest winds, but could still actually bring some typhoon force winds across the northern islands of the Philippines in the next 24 to 36 hours and by Saturday afternoon we expect they are forecasting the system to move this time now this time Joint Typhoon Warning Center is taking Jalawat on the right side of Okinawa Island so if this pans out the island may see some we some slightly weaker winds compared to if they were to be in the uh, right front quadrant of the storm now we can also see in the forecasts from J JTWC that they are expecting the sy system to continually weaken uh, by Friday, uh, dropping down to a Category 3 and by Saturday a Category 2 typhoon. So still very strong despite uh, forecast of it weakening to a Category 2, still a very strong system and something that should not evidently be uh, taken lightly. Um, and also, actually, as we head into the early part of next, we can see that forecast tracks from JDWC taking actually this to Honshu near Tokyo area. But by this time, it will be a tropical storm, but still could bring some heavy rains definitely in the region. So something to watch there as well. So just to wrap things up here, 
system will move northwestward, perhaps bringing some rains across northeastern Luzon in the next 24 to 48 hours, bringing some strong winds as well here in the northern islands of the Philippines, sparing Taiwan from a landfall, but could still see some strong winds and some heavy rains as well along the east coast, but definitely much better news here. As for Okinawa, they need to continue to monitor the system uh, because the depending on the side of which side the island will be definitely plays a big role in terms of seeing the strongest winds of the system. Now the timing for Okinawa would be around Friday evening to Saturday morning and Saturday afternoon. So when we'll expect to see the strongest winds from the system. And again, by the early part of next week, by Monday at least, expect the system to eventually head up north towards Japan. And we move on finally to the tropical storm Irinia. Near the Ogasawara Islands, last look at approximately 60, 60 kilometers east of the town of Chichijima, uh, an island here in the Ogasawara Islands, or about 1,050 kilometers south southeast of Tokyo. Maximum sustained winds are up slightly at 85 kilometers per hour, gusts of up to 120. System is moving quickly to the northeast, 25 kilometers per hour, but should slowly turn more to the north by tonight. Looking at the latest visible image, we still have the low-level circulation center still partly exposed. We are still seeing some strong westerly wind shear here, but you can still see that convective activity very strong despite being displaced to the north. Has been bringing rains actually across the Ogasawara Islands and strong winds, some reports of up to 80 km per hour in the past uh, 6 hours here and also. Rainfall amounts have been around 50 to even 100 mm in the past 12 hours alone. The good news is that the conditions here should improve in the next uh, 12 to 24 hours the system quickly moves to the north. Now the system is forecast to continue moving north e northeastward, but should turn to the north actually if you look at the steering layers here. The subtropical ridge in northern Pacific should steer the system generally to the north and by uh, Friday and Saturday it, w it is forecast to hit the paraclinic zone that strong jet stream uh, steering it away from Honshu, steering it away from Tokyo, uh, and remaining well east of the metropolitan area to not really forecast to directly impact the region. And by uh, Friday and Saturday, it's forecast to quickly head to the northeast. And if you look at the forecast from JMA, again, a northward turn and eventually of acceleration to the northeast as it begins to transition and into an extratropical system, also remaining very far away from Tokyo to really impact it. Perhaps some high waves, but uh, not too, too serious in terms of the uh, winds. Perhaps some rain showers as well as it interacts with the jet stream, but again, uh, definitely good news uh, for, for the region. Finally, here's the latest forecast from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. Again, showing the northeast return by uh, Friday and Saturday, forecasting this to actually near uh, become near intensity, near typhoon intensity of up to 110 km per hour sustained, again too far away to directly impact Tokyo. Um, as here the closest point of approach to Nar Narita airport is uh, going to be around 450 km away, so only high waves in terms of the big threat from this system. And that ends our video update for today, thank you for watching. And keep checking out Pagasa for the latest warning send forecast and also listen to your local official, especially if you are in northern Luzon, there might be some evacuation orders uh, in the next 24 hours. So, forecasting the uh, system to spare northern Luzon and spare Taiwan, but expect heavy rains and strong winds nevertheless in the regions in the next uh, 24 to 48 and even 72 hours as threat actually moves to Okinawa by Saturday. Stay safe guys, bye.